everybody's stepping up their uh I get that WWE F voice going like when I start. Let's this. get ready. Let's go. go. Let's go now. That's Ladies and gentlemen. It's the new on location Stone Fruit Coffee um, in Poland, Ohio. Do your live marketing show. Trying to be subdued, but I'm properly caffeinated at this point. And it's great to be back with our first guest into the new year. An amazing opportunity to sit down with my good friends at Ice Synergy. We got some big exciting news to drop on our fans today and on the Do Live community. Um, what else do we have going on? What are we going to talk about? We we're going to talk about a little bit about coffee. No, we we're going to talk about uh, brand, and we're going to talk about how if you have an established brand, what do you do when you try to dial up a new company within that brand? And we'll let you guys explain that here in just uh, just a few moments. Without hopefully um, falling on your face. <laughs> <laughs> So we are live on location from Stone Fruit Coffee in Poland, Ohio. I'm Dennis Shirali. For those of you who do not know, and I, for some crazy reason, got a bright idea to start a marketing conference in Youngstown, Ohio, called Do Yo Live. We are heading into um, Do Yo Live in person, physically, number five. Slight interruption with, maybe you heard there was a global pandemic, but um, we're coming back next August, September in 2022 for um, a, a big, big outing, speakers, sponsors, the whole nine. So we're really looking forward to getting together with everybody and our attendees. In the meanwhile, we are going to be back here live every Friday as much as we possibly can with different guests coming in, hanging out, supporting local business, and we're going to talk marketing. We're going to talk current events. We're going to talk all kinds of fun stuff. I've got some really great guests coming up next week. Diana Kaufman is from Poland, Ohio. Originally, she's an entrepreneur living in Pittsburgh. Uh, so she's coming back. And then after the week after that, I don't know if you guys know Mr. Jiu-Jitsu. Do you know Mr. Jiu-Jitsu? If you don't know Mr. Jiu-Jitsu, you need to go to Facebook today and look him up. Uh, Mike, um, uh, I'm not going to let it too much out of the bag, but he's amazing on Facebook. That's all I'm going to say. Mr. Like, Jiu-Jitsu. Mr. Jiu-Jitsu. And I'm going to stop there. So anyway, this is your show, not Mr. Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu-Jitsu. Say that fast three times. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> Uh, my friends from iSynergy are here today. Steve Cross, creative director, founder, owner, likes to be referred to as creative director. Becky Bertuzzi, um, what is your role at iSynergy? Uh, it just varies from day to day, but <laughs> official title is growth marketing specialist. Growth marketing. And we got Dan Reese. I am an uh, iSynergy I SEO specialist. Gotcha. Good stuff. So, um, one of the things that we want to talk about today a little bit, uh, we're going to get into kind of that that brand conversation, and you've got a new brand, yep. uh, your Ice Energy. Steve, so just like kind of high level, Ice Energy has been around for 10 years now. Um, we've been, been growing. You know, one of the, the reasons for it, you know, Lyft Marketing, uh, it's a local division is how, we, how we're framing it, of, <clears throat> excuse me, of, of Ice Energy. And the reason for that is, you know, marketing 101, what's your goal? Who's your audience? Um, as we've grown, you know, we grew from just me by myself and my audience and my customer persona and who I was targeting was anybody Cleveland, Pittsburgh regionally that had a, a digital marketing need, SEO, paid, programmatic, website development, design, you name it, social media, inbound. Um, so, but as you grow, you know, hopefully, you know, your growth, um, your audience evolves with you. And that's drastically changed the last couple of years, especially with the pandemic that you talked about. Um, everybody's traditional budgets and, you know, conferences are getting canceled left and right. People's, there's those traditional budgets are going digital and they're like, I have this extra 50 grand we used to sponsor this show for. I used to send five to 10 people to this conference. What do we do with these budgets? Now? Sure. Everything went digital. Yeah as long as they were a progressive company and wanted to keep growing and, and sustain their growth and, and not shrink and, you know, just and reach it. people. Yeah. yeah. So what that did is that put us, you know, we were gradually getting there. I synergy was um, over the last couple of years, but uh, what that did is it basically a hockey stick to us on a national international scale. Uh, we have, you know, we have about 200 clients between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Yeah. Uh, but we also have clients in Florida, Kansas, Missouri, New York, up and down the East Coast, Switzerland, London, South Africa, Saudi Arabia, you name it. Wow. We're global, you know, so it's amazing. It, 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 yeah, it's kind of 
it, it's it is it's hard to believe a lot of times but you know we just stayed the course and, and we've just grown um now as we've done that it's how do we talk to and this is something probably everybody in the audience has, has an issue with and you probably talk to clients and, and, and people that you consult with who's your audience talk to your audience specifically don't just say your message out there you have personas you have your different audience segments your cohorts talk to them directly and i synergy is huge predicament issue problem was i'm talking to national and international clients that have seven figure budgets sure i'm also talking to the client in poland ohio canfield columbiana you know warren where their budget is you know 500 bucks for the year right we help them all we don't um discriminate against the the budgets or their needs or how comprehensive or dynamic their needs are their strategies are um and that's difficult to do you know it's like everybody you talk to we've been through it a hundred times you talk to a client and they're like well, who's your audience well i can sell something to anybody <laughs> well no shit you can't but who's your target audience and where do you make your money because they're probably your revenue is probably coming to a 90 percent if you find figure out that cohort if that audience segment is probably 90 percent of your revenue yeah you know and define that don't just say well i'll just spread my word everywhere and hopefully they find me right you know and so we were falling in that trap ourselves so what we did is we decided you know there's two ways to go with that and then this is maybe it's too much information but it's trim the fat make a line if your budget isn't x we can't work with you yeah or if you don't have this type of need we can't work with you sure and i didn't want to do that because i built my business i have clients from 10 years ago when i started when i was by myself yeah that have seen us grow and I didn't want to take that approach. Sure. Um, so it's, I want to keep those clients. I love those clients. The startups are actually where we get energized from, you know, because they have, they don't have the budgets per se most of the time, right. but they have the energy, they have the motivation and it's energizing when they walk in to the, to the office. So what we decided to do is create our local division, lift marketing, um, that services the, the local geo between Cleveland and Pittsburgh. Um, there are some budgetary or if they have some strategic needs, comprehensive, you know, needs when it comes to the marketing and their campaigns and strategies that they want to execute, um, that they may end up as an eye synergy client. But for the most part here locally in this market, everyone's going to be a lift marketing client. Sure. It's not something that we want to hide. Like it says right in the tagline, um, <laughs> a division of eye synergy, you know, so we're not trying to, you know, pull the wool over anybody's eyes or do anything like that yeah um, actually use the same colors you know yeah, yeah. right right and you'll you'll notice like in the, in the lift logo there's um that um you know, it's called you josie that becky designed um <laughs> there's some consistency between the ice energy logo and there's some relationship there yeah that you'll see so it wasn't anything we wanted to hide basically we wanted to say thank you to this base because that's where ice energy grew from Right. And we didn't want to leave our roots. We didn't want to abandon that. Uh, we wanted to stay true to that and always help here locally. Um, you know, so I synergy is going to take like the leadership roles in, in I synergy staff wise, resource wise. Um, we're going to be able to spend more time on those clients and dive deeper with them. Um, and they're going to have less clients to work with, but lift marketing you know we're going to keep those clients and we're just keep churning out for the for the local people here i think that's great and i, I got i've got like a ton of follow-up questions on that um it's the most i've ever talked to the entire time <laughs> yeah i'm actually pretty Jeez, shocked I, you know, I, you know, I, I, because I thought it was going to be five words and we're done we could just go home yeah we're done yeah. i'll see you guys well, later. actually we could rebrand this as the steve show <laughs> yeah, yeah we're done yeah. dennis was getting antsy because he was trying to i got like really cool ideas <laughs> for a logo i gotta stop with the brain because i'm just trying to listen but i'd like it but, and, and so I feel like Do You Live is now Prince because we're Do You Live presented formerly known as yeah. Yeah. like by iSynergy. But now, and now it's Lyft. Now he's causing me a ton of work. <laughs> he's a great sponsor. And, and, and I mean that wholeheartedly because, you know, over the past two years, like we, you know, we talked about, like we didn't deliver a, a physical event. We've always had the online content. We built the audience. But there's something to the in-person event, and and you guys stuck by us through that. Um, so with that said, Do You Live is now presented by Lyft Marketing. 
obviously it fits. It's in it's in the local community, and and so what are the, what are the two of you going to be doing? Are, are your focus on Lyft? Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I will be the art director for Lyft, and Dan is our fearless leader, and he will be the creative director for Lyft. Not sure how I feel about that term leader, but I am the creative director. So a similar role to what Steve does for Ice Energy, I'll be handling with Lyft. Um, the, the first point of contact with new clients, uh, kind of overseeing all the campaigns and just touching a little bit of everything in the company. Sure. So what's the biggest challenge that, it, I mean, what are the challenges biggest? What are the, what's the challenge of coming, that comes with, you have a company, you have a brand, you know, as Ice Energy, right? People recognize that. And now you're introducing another brand under the brand. And there's, I mean, I, I mean, I'd live it kind of on a daily basis with do yo Dennis, and then, you know, some of the other things that I've got going on with icons publication and, and, and the consulting business, but what are, what are, what are some of the challenges that come along with when you've got the brand and now you're going to introduce a brand that's underneath that. Or side by side with it, really. I hate, I hate to say anything. That's not. That's not. Yeah, it's, not yeah, it's, it's 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 here. But alongside, I I don't know if it was the, the the most difficult. It was the thing that I was most concerned about was communicating to our client base and having them understand what we were doing and how we were evolving um, without them feeling like we were banning them or leaving them in any way. I wanted to to make sure that they understood that this is a successful step. And it's because of them, right? You know, it's because we were built on their backs and, and, and working with them. Um, but to say that's the thing I was most concerned about, I don't think it was the thing, probably the hardest step because that was probably the easiest now because I've talked to clients that are like, hey, congratulations. It's awesome. Thanks. Thanks for letting us know what's going on. You know, so the, the feedback's been great. Um, you know, there's been some inconsistencies of, hey, I thought you were Lyft. I thought you were Ice Energy. What's going on? I got this. <laughs> Um, so, you know, there hasn't been, but you know, that's been very minimal. So uh, I, to say that that was the thing I was worried about the most for sure, but I don't think it was the hardest thing. I mean, Becky's been in the trenches for no, I mean, months, really but. from like a behind the scenes logistical standpoint, the hardest thing is like, and it's like starting, you're basically starting a new business. So it's like yeah. getting all of that stuff up off the ground right? and, you know, building the website, figuring out the logo, figuring out the, the brand itself of, you know, how do we want to present ourselves in the marketplace and doing all of that research right, to kind of get that flushed out and hashed out. Uh, that's probably been the, the hardest part. I, I wouldn't even call it hard. I would call it tedious because yeah, it was really, it was really fun. I mean, because the day that he, he told us what was going on, we were at a staff meeting and all of us immediately just started writing stuff down. Like I have an idea for this. Yeah. I have an idea for that. Like I came up with the idea for the logo in the shower, you know? So it's been, it's been fun to kind of take, yeah. Best ideas in the shower. Yeah, always. Um, but it's been fun to kind of take his idea and his vision and execute on it. Yeah. Cause it really was just, it, it was an idea. It was a strategy. I didn't, present it to the team saying, all right, here's our new name. Here's our new logo. It was, here's how we're going to position and here's how we're going to restructure. Right. And, you know, because that's just how we do it. You know how we do it. It's it's a group effort. Like, I don't have the ego. I don't, right. I don't have all the answers. I rely on the team. That's, you know, so that it was, it was, I think it was fun, but like you said, it was tedious. It was tedious because <laughs> there were a couple of times where we would just, we would get so excited that we kind of got ahead of ourselves and he'd have to go, at the Briggs. Come on back in. Steve and I <laughs> Come went on to, back in. We went and had some beers and wings. And I don't know if you've ever had wings with Steve. I have had wings with Steve. Impressive um, <laughs> I don't went, know if you've done this, but like it's. We went a couple of weeks ago and the amount of food that was on our table <laughs> was obscene. Yeah. Like two guys there. And I'm like. <laughs> but anyway, um, he, he let me know at that point. He's like, hey, you know, just sit tight. And as, uh, as me. With the sponsor, I'm also I'm all ultra sensitive to like making sure that I'm delivering on expectations and needs. And this guy's just like calm, cool, as, cool as a cucumber. Is like, listen, um, we're gonna do a rebrand. I don't really want you know you know keep pushing nice synergy, but don't you know it's coming. But don't worry about it. And like when it comes, we you know we'll put. It. And then like I think it was like two weeks ago. I mean I know it was yeah. being worked on, right. but you're like, 
uh, you know, we're ready. Here you go. Here's here's another thing. We have we have another number of people on. I don't know if you know Susan Mocker, but obviously De- Hi, thank Susan. you, Susan. Deanna's uh uh hanging out. Thank you, Deanna. Ken's Kelsey Clem, uh Dr. Mike Sedoy, all of them wishing you happy new year and congratulations. Um um what I, I also love about this is this. So and unless I miss something, you've owned the story up till now the narrative of dropping this brand. And I think that this is a, this is something that I believe for a very long time, uh, um, which we call it of like, everybody could be their own media company now. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to rely, like I imagine there's a press release coming. Correct. Right. But, but we gave to you, you told your, you told your client base, I got an email. Hey, the only thing that changes is maybe the name on the invoice. Yep. You know, that, that was an email. You let everybody know internally you give a, you're giving us the opportunity to yeah. break the news. You bet. So there's probably, you know, there's a news source or business journal out there that's watching this and they're gonna be like, oh, like, you know, you're they pick it up here and then they come and cover it. That's how podcasting is working now. Like there's a lot of stories because the vindicator's not around. They're watching live podcasts and then they're like, hey, let's go and cover this story, see if it's a news story. Um, so I love the fact that you've you took the PR decision to tell your story first and then everybody else gets it next well, that's kind of our way right you know we're kind of we, we we've always kind of been I, I i get told and i like it that we're the hidden gem of the area because we don't i mean do you this is that and we did we did some business journal stuff but um locally we kind of stay behind the scenes you know our business has been grown and been made on well, SEO, but here locally on, you know, referrals and networking. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's a very simple, easy way to go of do good work, treat people right and give them the results that they want and they deserve and your business is going to grow. Let's pause for the cause for a minute and pay a couple bills. How about we do that? Yeah. All right. Cooking with Crows. Crows Cabinets is a local company that is a sponsor of Do Yo Live. They do residential kitchen remodeling, building new builds. Becky just did a, a, a new kitchen. She's lived through it. It wasn't a Crow's kitchen, but that's all right. Um, bathrooms. Forgive you. Custom, yeah, okay. custom Sorry, storage. I would have got you a hell of a deal. Custom storage, um, man cave, she sheds, you name it. Crow's got you covered. So in this segment of Cooking with Crow's, I we need to know from each one of you either, either what your favorite meal is to cook or to eat in your own home kitchen. And I'll go first since I put you on the spot. If it's a Friday night, usually I'm cracking a bottle of wine, got a cast iron skillet. There's a nice meaty steak going in a reverse sear coming out. Um, and then also a nice big salad and some garlic bread. Um, that's one of my favorite meals on a Friday night. Cooking with crows. You get to stay home on a Friday night. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> so The days are numbered, though, my this, friend. This might be weird, but I actually don't do a lot of the cooking at home. My boyfriend does because he's way better at, at it than I am, and Get he enjoys it. <laughs> so I would say probably one of the meals that I enjoy him to cook for me. I'm cleanup crew, by the way. Um, it's probably steak. He does it on a charcoal grill and he'll put like applewood or something mm-hmm. to, to smoke it a little bit. That, some potatoes, a salad. Love it. Beer, good to go. Yep. Damn. I hate to be redundant, but a big fat rib steak on the grill, that's my specialty. There we go. Yeah, it's some probably some Brussels sprouts. Oh, there you go. Mine's mine's a Sunday night. It's it's my wife and I's it's it was our tradition the other were you know, got away from a little bit, but Sunday nights, wine, pasta, what's in the fridge, what can we make up, make a dish in it, and it's just like, uh, you know, whatever that show is on, on the cooking channel where you just get some ingredients Chops. and you make, yeah, you just make it work, and you know, you have a couple of drinks while you're cooking, you keep eating while you're cooking, and that's our Sunday evening type of a thing as um, that I enjoy the most. Love it, absolutely. Love I also it. love making breakfast. Do you? Oh, yeah. a, a good big breakfast on like a, oh, yeah. a s- Saturday morning, you know, and waffles. I think kids here. remember that, like, like, you know, dad of uh, cooking. A memory cooking. I have growing up is yeah. Sunday morning. My dad would always make us breakfast. Yeah, bacon. Yeah, and it's just bacon. <laughs> it's just bacon. <laughs> you have a bacon breakfast. <laughs> and like, bacon. Life, is, life is good. Um, let's jump into 
I, I don't want to say that this is a, a controversial topic, but because um, the internet always wins. But um, conversation about can you be a have a Youngstown in your name or in your brand <laughs> in your business? Uh, and 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 be not in the city limits. By the way, because, I, and then, here's the reason why I ask this: because you have 200 clients. Let's not forget. Yeah. I Synergy, we're here live at Stone Fruit Coffee in Poland, Ohio. Um, can you? You know, you have 200 clients. Some of those probably have a Youngstown in their name in some capacity. What advice do you give to them when? You know they have a brand and they're in the region and they're re referencing the region and how, how does that what how, how do you how do you view that do you like i mean i'll tell you what i my my opinion is is very bluntly because i have like three brands that are tied to the young <laughs> <name. laughs> i feel that young sound represents the region I would agree with that. And first of all, Warren doesn't have this problem because nobody gets salty what? if a Howland <laughs> business uses Warren in their name. I understand it as it's a region. Okay. So leverage it. People don't know, people might not as be might not be as familiar with Canfield or Poland or Struthers, but you say Youngstown, that gives them a general idea. And it's the way that I look at it is the same way of Cleveland suburbs using the word Cleveland, but they're their mailing address might be Willoughby or Lakewood. Okay, so so the follow-up question then to this is to to yeah. do your Cleveland and Pittsburgh and you have clients in Florida, do those clients in those cities um reference or recognize Cleveland or Miami or wherever the client is in Florida, or do they recognize Rocky River? There's a very similar similar narrative, Cleveland and Pittsburgh, of you're not from the city, you're in a suburb. Okay. It's just not as aggressive as it is in Youngstown. And that's because of the fishbowl that we live in. Yeah. It's small. Uh, and aggressive might not be the word the same. For the, I mean, you could also say that it, uh, pride, you know, because somebody that was born and raised downtown Youngstown within the city limits and still lives there. It's, I don't want to paint it as in a negative sense of aggressive, but I think it's, they're pride, they're prideful. They're more proud of that. Yeah, yeah. A little bit, maybe touchy, but um, but it, it happens in the other markets. It's just very much less, much less, especially Cleveland and Pittsburgh here locally. Um, I'm sure there's some other pockets that we don't, I don't have experience in that are probably the similar. But you know, you've been out, came back. Youngstown is a very different market. <laughs> right right so 22 years out of the area i had this conversation with somebody just yesterday they they lived away for they, it was the same amount of time i, I was i was at, a, at the tipping point i think it was equal amount of time grew up here left for 20 21 years and came back um and so so yeah like it's 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 different it's a really hard place to, I would say, lo relocate to. It's not like any other city that, I, that I'm from here. I almost had to pay a penance. <laughs> like you went away. Yeah. You went away. Yeah. And that, but um, but you know, there's certain markets where your your marketing campaign, your strategy can be a bridge and repeat. It's gonna what works in, um, you know, Charlotte is also gonna work in Pittsburgh. None of that is going to work in Youngstown. And we get, you know, we do a lot of of collaboration work with um, larger agencies that are outside the area that have clients that, you know, they're, they're marketing initiative and strategies for Youngstown area. And they always get told and we get a call and they're like, Hey, um, I was told to reach out to you because Youngstown's different than any market we've ever been in. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, basically here's what you need to know. And, and we kind of, you know, give them the rundown and, you know, we do some collaboration work with them and we execute here locally for them, but um, it's, it's different. It's different. And I don't know, I don't, I, don't, I don't have the words to be able to describe it properly. Um, I don't think it's different in a bad sense. I don't necessarily even know it's different in a good sense. I think there's probably some pros and cons both ways to it. What do you think? Richard? I agree. I mean, I see it as respectful and a tribute to the city when a company that's maybe outside of the downtown limits is 
naming it after Youngstown. And I understand why people in the city might be a little defensive about that and say, oh, you're not really from Youngstown. But um, I just think it's a thing where people should be able to come together on it. Um, you know, for example, um, you talked about coming to the market. It's a hard place to come to, um, not somewhere where people really think about relocating to Youngstown. Um, we did a project recently at the Southern Park Mall, and the general manager of the mall is a guy who has been with Washington Prime Group, different markets, moved around quite a bit. And he came to Youngstown and he said, we're renting, we're not buying. He was here for a few months and said, we're buying a house here. He wanted to be here. So I just think, going back to what you said, I think it's a thing where Youngstown has come to describe the area, what people might refer to as the Mahoney Valley, maybe. Um, so I... From my perspective, I I look at it as a positive when more places are using Youngstown as a reference point in their brands. Sure. No. You know, so it, it makes them accountable of, all right, you want to use Youngstown. How are you helping Youngstown? How are you, how is your company, even if you're not located down there, how are you benefiting Youngstown or how are you benefiting from Youngstown? And it's a two-way street. You know, it, it want to leverage that name, area, city, you better be on something, put, you know, give it back. I think it's difficult or challenging to know what just how much the give back is. And the assumption is that there's not a give back. I think that there's that comes along a little bit with the reference or the utilization of the name. And I, cause I, I, I mean, so that I do believe that. I think that it could be a little bit noisier here around the narrative simply because of the fact that in a bigger city, there's just more sheer volume. So like, like I go back to like New York city when I lived there, you know, and, and we pissed off, like I was in healthcare and say I pissed off a neurologist. It wasn't the end of the world. Cause there was like 50 more of them, but you come to Youngstown and you piss off a neurologist. So you're like, well, I'm down to two. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good luck. Right. <laughs> Godspeed. So it's, it, so everything's magnified in a smaller market. So you can hear those voices. I think just a little bit louder and it's a smaller echo chamber is yeah. what it is sure it's, it's yeah. exactly what you described like to quote one of my favorite shows letter kenny bad gas travels fast in a small town so it's going to amplify a lot more than it would in a larger city and i think that's where a lot of the not the the problems but that's what differentiates the market I, is because it's so small and you can I think people can understand that from a business perspective even better. And that's why I think Lyft Marketing gives them a, a unique opportunity to do that. And the reason is, is that um, you could go to the, to the bad side of the superhero, superpower, right? And there's villains. And then there's, I don't want to say villains, that's the wrong term. But you could use it negatively. You could use it, use it for the good power portion of it, too, is that it's really easy in this market. I want to say easy. It's a different market, but it's easy to get your your message out because of that as well. Now, whether or not, you know, what you said, do you deliver on your product and on your service and continue to build your business that way? Um, but like you can, you can make a splash here like pretty quick because of that as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. Um, you just have to be careful. And you know, we are live at stone fruit coffee. So if anybody's ever coming through and we're <laughs> yeah. on live, you can stop in and say, hi, that's fine. We really appreciate it. The fact that that stone fruit is giving us the space uh to 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 use this here um so but to your ultimate question i don't think shy away from it at all i think oh. if you're uh, on the north side or your south side or you're in a, uh, an area around youngstown or you know if you are in downtown Youngstown, great um but i don't think that there's any reason to shy away from it but if, if you are going to do it, make sure you have a plan, make sure you have a strategy, make sure you're laid out, ready to execute and don't deter from it. We have to Stay change strong. our, we have to change our name from do yo, do Youngstown to do po. <laughs> <laughs> because we're in Poland. Uh, do poo? That's what you're going to get. Do poo. <laughs> yeah. do poo. That's what you're going to get. That would be amazing. I had one the other day that was. I forget what they they said. It was a new one. It wasn't the D O Y O. It wasn't Doy Olive. That's been the most recent one because the email is D O Y O L I V E. So they're like, "Are you Doy Olive?" And I was like, "Sure, Doy Olive." 
That's our new name, Doyle Olive. You can make your sponsor check out to that. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, you know what? We've always been committed to to the name, to the reference. Um, I, I taught part time at Youngstown State for a while. Uh, we we've given tickets away to YSU students. We've always held the event um, in the location in the city, um, and we've given back just as much as we possibly can to to have the 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 right, I guess, or the privilege to be able to use that name. And the twenty one years that I was away, if anybody ever asked me, I wasn't from like Louisville, Ohio. I mean, that would get there, but I was from Youngstown. So um, let's jump, let's switch gears into, I was on a podcast recently in the past year and um, somebody did rapid fire questions. I don't know if you remember rapid fire questions. Mm-hmm. Do you remember rapid fire questions? Yes. Like, right? Yeah. And then like one of the questions was like, what's the best pizza in Youngstown? And they asked me that question and they've been on the deal live show. And, and so like, they were like, hey, we're going to do rapid fire questions. I was like, this sounds eerily familiar. And then they asked me, like, question number seven was like, what's, you know, what's your favorite pizza in Youngstown? I go, that's really familiar. I was like. We used to do that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> hey, I'm very flattered. Somebody was listening. Thought it was a good idea. Um, we're going to do overrated, underrated, or properly rated. And you can put some narrative around it as well. So you can say why you think it is. All right. You ready? Do it. Donuts. <laughs> Sorry, that stuff. So you're looking at me like really. <laughs> I say underrated. I love donuts. I think uh, I hate cake. I love donuts. White House Fruit Farms. Yeah, well, properly rated. I'm not a big sweet eater, but I will have the occasional donut, and I'll say properly rated. I'm gonna say underrated. But I'm going to go with the maple cream stick. Is that technically a donut if it's not round? Sure. I call it a donut. Yeah, it's a, it's, a donut. <laughs> it's a donut. I think they're a little overrated. That's it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> done. Everybody's allowed their opinion. We're having some stone fruit coffee. Coffee in general. Overrated, underrated, properly rated. Underrated. Underrated. Overrated. <laughs> I love coffee. Properly rated. I, you know what, I, you said you said something before, like you're you're getting into the age where coffee kind of affects you. Yeah, I've had my bouts with coffee over the past few years, where like it's almost like a martini. Like one martini is good, two martinis okay, three you're on the ground. Coffee, one cup of coffee, great, I'm on fire. Two cups of coffee, I start to get jittery. Three cups of coffee, I get nothing done. So managing the caf- caffeine intake is a really important. Yeah aspect i think when i say overrated i think it's it's less um i enjoy a good cup of coffee and like stone fruit i definitely think has a place and and i enjoy it when i say overrated like you really need a duncan every (laughs) three blocks do we need to have apparently like i don't go to starbucks at all it's like what 15 bucks for a cup of coffee like no ridiculous so if I'm gonna spend a decent amount of cup, amount of, of money on a cup of coffee, it better be going towards somebody here locally and not some international chain. That's fair. That's, that's my yeah. thought. That's Star- like, that's where I come chain, from. Over, chain coffee, over absolute ra- last resort. I live about five minutes from Nova Coffee in downtown Warren. They know me by name there. Like that's I would rather right. patronize them. Stone Fruit, Branch Street. Like I want to support the local coffee shops around here yeah. across it's, the board. It's still underrated, right? Across the board, like, like local, you want to support local right. businesses. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Not just no. coffee shops everywhere. Right. Yeah. Like college, college football bowl games. We got the national championship coming up on Monday night. It will be an sec all finals. We had bowl games go for about, I don't know, better part of December into January. Any thoughts? Oh, I go back and forth on that one. I'd say underrated just because so many people now that there's a playoff say the bowl games don't matter. The bowl games matter to a lot of those kids. But now the fact that over the last five to ten years you have the elite players, if they're not in the playoffs, they're not going to play in the bowl game because they don't want to hurt their draft stock. Sure. That does hurt the bowl games a little bit. I'm a Pitt graduate. 
And it killed me to see Kenny Pickett sit out that bowl game because they would have beat Michigan State if he was there. Killed me but, too because I got a Barstool Sports app and I, I <laughs> put ten bucks on the <laughs> Panthers, and then I saw he wasn't playing. My son actually was like, "I was like, I could have used that intel before the game, not, so, not, <laughs> not during yeah, the game." Thanks. I think for the most part they're probably underrated, but some get overrated because of that, because of you know the elite players choosing not to play. I think now they're properly rated just because, what was it, five, ten years ago? Like, there was, like, 60 bowls or something like that. It was just blow, blow, the point blow, blow. Bowl and It was just too much. And now I think that it scaled back. They made the playoffs. So I think it's it's nice that, um, yeah, there aren't too many now. And it's still, like, it, to be bowl eligible, I don't know if it's still the same now. Five or six games. Six, yeah. yeah, like that's. We got DJ Oakley on. He dropped by. Maybe he put something in the comments here. I'm sure that he knows. He knows something about sports? I heard he knows something about I sports. I know a little bit. YSN Live. Properly rated. Although I still, and it's not the bowls, but the ranking is still ridiculous. You're mad. Like, You're still mad. I don't. Oh, let me. I'm gonna say this. I I love the Ohio State Buckeyes. We had no business being in the Final Four. Neither did Michigan. I'm sorry. I'm so glad that they got taken to the woodshed by Georgia because they had no business being ranked number two. Same with Cincinnati. Good for oh, Luke Fickle, but you, bro. You, you, I thought it was awesome that Cincinnati got. I, and I also. Love I feel like they got they, thrown a bone. They still got to compete. They got thrown a bone, but they almost got put out just to be embarrassed because I feel like they were put at four to go against Alabama. So that way they could get crushed. And they didn't. And then, which... then the committee could be like, see why the power, you have to be in a power conference to yeah. make it. Yeah. But they held their own. They couldn't compete on the O-line, D-line. They were just overmatched with Alabama. But well, their talent was there. So I love the fact that even though they didn't win, it was a competitive game and they held their own. I was pleasantly surprised watching that game because I thought it was going to be a blowout. I'm so upset about Boise State not getting their chance. And then they rocked at, you know, they not rock, but they beat Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Yeah. yeah. Like, like 15 like, years ago. Yeah. But yeah. I'm, I'm still upset about that because they could have competed. That was the that was the game where he like the Statue of Liberty. Yeah. Liberty. They did was that, that the year that LSU they, and Alabama rematched to they, the title. I think, think so. They actually did the hook and lateral. They ran a, yeah. they ran a post route over the middle. Guy catches it, and the guy's coming this way, and he laterals it this way. It was amazing. It was the first time, like, I, I mean, that was, I was to tie the game. That was a tie the game. Then in overtime, they ran the, the Statue of Liberty. Um, yeah, that was sweet. So what's his name? Ian something. Proposed, I thought it was uh, he Kellen. He his girlfriend. Uh, right oh, yeah. 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 Which that's got to, you got you to gotta win that. Wasn't the quarterback that. the. <laughs> yeah. But there's a lot of yeah. things, storylines there. Wasn't the quarterback the offensive coordinator for Dallas? Yes. Dude, I can't Kellen some he is. Yeah. yeah. Kellen Moore. Yeah. He came from there. Yeah, he was a quarterback for Boise State. I so they so what the, the, the complaint about college basketball is that the regular season doesn't matter because the tournament has so much emphasis. Mm-hmm. But college football I feel is heading that direction as well. That's, DJ just chimed in. That the regular season the so I do feel I agree with him. I think the Bulls are overrated because of that. Um, because of the ranking system, because of the fact that they've not gone deeper and figured out how to put eight, ten teams. Because I think you could get to – I don't. you don't need 65 teams like the NCAA basketball tournament. Eight, eight or 12? Eight, eight or 12, you're, you're pretty much there. And then you start talking about amateur athletics and injuries and things like that. But where we're at with this is that um, with college athletes sitting out, you know, in in the opportunity to to not get injured, um, then you're now entering this landscape that like bowl games basically didn't matter. Like, what happened during the regular season just a month ago to now when you have your entire starting lineup, like wide receiver core for Young or Ohio State? Obviously, you saw the talent of Njigba, but the rest of the team. A lot of these sat out. A lot of these sat out. And uh, so did, and, and Haskell Wilson. 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 Yeah. So, so yeah. And so I think that, I think that until they do that now, would you ever, there's a lot of money. There's a, a ton of money in sponsoring. It's like really, really expensive, right? Would you put a client on name on a bowl game? Like the, the Tostitos change that out to like the marketing <laughs> bowl. And, I think there's a place for it. Depends. Um, like the barstool, 
the bar stool actually sponsoring a bowl game because they now have sports betting makes complete sense. Yeah. yeah, that's a perfect fit. That's a great fit. But yeah, I think it gets back to like where we were, you know, there was is Alamo Bowl still a thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like um it just I think if it makes sense. NIL, that's the other thing that's a factor as well. That now name, image, and likeness, like athletes yeah. can obviously figure out a way to make some money. There's like 45 athletes down at Youngstown State that are all signed to NIL agreements. Like if you go to the website, uh -huh. you can see them. Most of them is Barstool, but it's also another factor that I think, I don't know, kind of plays into seeing where this all ends up going with amateur athletics. Look, most of the, so at four years of college football at a division one school, there's a ton of privilege that comes along with that. And you're treated really well, even, even at a mid major, even at a small D one, and it's even trickled down to the D two level. Now it is a really nice trip for a, a kid that doesn't necessarily always get to go everywhere, but over a four year college career, you've, you've had a pretty nice go of it. But for the most part, like the game's competitive, but like they're getting to go to San Antonio, maybe for the first time. And I know, from playing college basketball, like we went out to Colorado for a couple tournaments, like over Christmas and we went here and we went there and it was a great opportunity for me to go out and travel places. Like I had never been as yeah. an opportunity to go do it. Same, you know, like, right. I got, I think the first time I was ever out of, out of country was in college when we went to the Bahamas for a training trip. There you go. Yeah. I mean, right. So there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of things that come along with that. All right, last over, under, un, underrated, I'm sorry, overrated, underrated. Ready? The term of 2022 in digital marketing. You will, not, you will you, if you're not sick of it already, you will be by next week. Metaverse. <laughs> oh my God. I don't get, is it a digital marketing term or is it just a digital it's just a term? Thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. I mean, early adopters, you know, there's some major brands going heavy on it right now. They're, they're, they're jumping in full yeah. force. But um, I would say, I'd say prob hmm. I'm gonna <laughs> properly, <laughs> properly rated in our space. I think it's overrated outside of our realm where people, you know, it's just like with the NFT and crypto space. Everybody and their brother thinks that they understand NFTs and crypto just because they have a, a wallet on their phone and they, they got 10 bucks and something. <laughs> Um, so I would say properly rated for our space, people that are working within, you know, the, the digital space overrated for the general public. Yeah. Agreed. I think our space, we've got, we're working to understand the ins and outs of it and how we can leverage it outside of the public overrated. I agree to me personally overrated, but, um, you know, the, the potential could be there you know to do big things so I think it's properly rated I I firmly believe right now it's overrated because of the fact it's just in the branding and the naming I think that the metaverse has been around and circling around us for yeah. a very long time like when we when we in in year one of Duyo in 2016 we were touting virtual reality and augmented reality and, and ways to incorporate that in your business. And, and obviously that was really early, but like that's a big part portion of, of metaverse, right? Mm -hmm. And year two, we had a keynote that was talking about blockchain technology and everybody in the crowd was like this, right? Eyes glazed over. But there no still idea. are kind of now too, but, and then you, you add in crypto, NFT and that sort of thing. So I think that these things, now they're just like, they're like putting a label on it. And, and we're going to just shove, like, it's like saying cloud services and that was generic. Now Meta is just like, let's just shove all this stuff in here and see where it goes. Yeah. NFTs is a really difficult thing to wrap your mind around, at least my mind. I feel like I was, you're going to laugh about this. So I was looking at places to go on a mushroom retreat, not like going to hunt mushrooms, but to go take mushrooms. <laughs> so <laughs> my wife's probably going to kill me, but I mean, I could probably get a guy, but I'm just saying. <laughs> Everybody's got a guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, so hear me, because like it's so hard to wrap my mind around NFTs, and we're we're currently working on an NFT project for 
or do yo in 2022. And we have a short term plan for this year and a long term plan over the next like three years of how, how we can potentially evolve this. Um, but to really understand like NFTs, like I feel like it's an alternate universe that I need to go someplace like psychedelically in order to be able to really walk away and understand it. It's actually very simple. People just don't want to wrap their mind around it. It's a digital version. It's a digital imprint that they can purchase. Aside from that, like, that's it. It's There's for people who for want to say they have something that nobody else has. Yeah. And it's so, just digital. Like, yeah. instead of having it on your wall, it's... Yeah. We've had, like I said, we have clients all over the world. Patrick Memoran, he's a former owner of Lamborghini, is a client of ours. Um, he is an artist. He started, his artist's name is Duck Dive. Um, we've been working with him for five, six months. Um, and it's all about him, you know, becoming an NFT artist and out of the traditional space because uh, he's always done digital, you know, video, audio, um, traditional campaigns. He's has exhibitions all over the world. Um, and we've been promoting him as an NFT artist and how to go to market, how to create that. Um, because NFTs aren't like a traditional, I want to buy a Monet. They aren't that. NFTs are, I want to support you as an artist. I know I don't have something tangible that I'm going to hang on my wall. But I love you as an artist. I love what you're doing. I want to support you in your quest and in your journey throughout this, what you're doing. I'm going to buy one of your NFTs for 20 bucks, 50 bucks, 5,000, 10,000, because I want to support you. It's community based. It's not necessarily investor base. Does that make sense? It does. Where, where it starts to get complicated is now because of blockchain and crypto, which is the currency, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, so because of that, you now have a resell value to the digital token, if you will. Yeah. And the original owner can get royalty off of that resell. Correct. And so where that resale market is <laughs> very, very minimal. Now yeah. it, it's minimal. Um, so, and, and so what we're trying to figure out is this, is with the conference, you know, like I could very easily, and we've done it. Like we, we were like, hey, we're going to incentivize people that are, you know, speakers or, you know, so-called influencers um, that, um, you know, feel that they can drive traffic. So we'll give you an affiliate link or a promo code. And people inevitably don't end up utilizing the affiliate code ends up getting broken because somebody goes and shops around a website and then they go back. And they make a purchase or you lose that trackability or that credit. If they don't use the promo code, you don't get credit. But on the blockchain, so we can offer that now. But if we offer if we offer an NFT ticket to a sponsor and and don't rely on affiliate links and we don't rely on a promo code that somebody may or may not use, you can go out and sell on the blockchain an NFT ticket to do yo and secure that payment for you. And obviously any royalty like that, I, I build mm -hmm. into that percentage of sell. So I think that's kind of an interesting, I think that that's kind of an interesting, I think, yeah, I think you, you roll back to blockchain and that's the technology that is going to transcend and change the world over the next three to five years. Yeah. In spaces that we can't even comprehend yet. It's going to transcend uh, geos it's you know because it's global it's going to transcend spaces retail you know marketing um investing anything it's 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 going to be everywhere people the people that um that somebody said something to me they were like they kind of laughed that the and it's fine because like it happens a lot like uh but it was like good luck with that haha -ha, nft you know and 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 so you don't really realize if like you're already using some of that to some capacity at least the blockchain transactions. So my example was like, I bought tickets to go to an Ohio State football game from an individual buyer, and we transitioned the e-ticket secure in a secure environment. Mm -hmm. So there's no longer that person standing out on the street corner selling you a fake ticket. Scalping tickets. This is this has been certified, verified with technology yeah. through blockchain mm -hmm. that that makes that all secure. So interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, for dropping on by. Uh, we are live today at Stone Fruit Coffee. 
Do Your Live, uh, the Do Your Live Marketing Show is brought to you now by Lyft Marketing, as is Do Your Live is presented by Lyft Marketing, a, um, a eye synergy business brand. So thank you, Steve Cross, Becky Bertuzzi, Brian, Dan, Dan. Why did I say that? Why am I thinking Brian? That's, I'm an idiot. It says right there in front of me. Anyway, getlifted.io. Getlifted.io. Dot io. Thank you, everybody, for dropping on by today. Everybody have a great, safe weekend. Enjoy that snow out there. We'll be back next Friday live from Stone Fruit Coffee with Diana Kaufman. Thank you. See you.